Today, I'm sharing what my 12th grader is doing for literature. Hi, welcome back to my channel. If you've been here before, you see there's a different background. I'm in our schoolroom today. Today, I'm sharing what I'm doing with my 12th grader for her literature course. She had already finished all of her credits for language arts for high school. So this year, her language arts were just icing on the cake. It's just something to further her grasp of literature and review things that she's already learned. Language arts is by far her strongest subject. She's a great writer. She's a great reader. She she just, she's really good at all of it. She has read a lot of books already and she's very strong in this area. So I kind of played around with a few different ideas of what I wanted her literature to look like for 12th grade. And I came up with two options and I gave them to her to choose. So the one she chose was that I would break up literature into the different time periods and she would learn about each literary time period and uh, read some, read a variety of different kinds of writing from each time period. It actually surprised me that that was the one she picked, but it was really fun to put together, but it was also pretty difficult. I watched a man on YouTube named Benjamin McAvoy. He went to Oxford and he does a lot of videos on books and writing and different things and he's he's so good so I watched a bunch of his videos and got recommendations from him and took in a lot of sources of the best things from each time period and what the most agreed upon time periods are and then I also used the literature courses that I'm doing for myself right now from master books I showed that in a previous video I took those and kind of used a little bit from them as well so what I ended up coming up with is this notebook it's just a looks pretty simple. And in it, I've broken up each time period into a different section. And in those sections, I have put in different things that I wanted her to read. And then I picked some novels. I'm obviously leaving out a lot of great literature, a lot of great poetry, a lot of, a lot of wonderful and worthwhile things to read in this. Part of that is I took in her sensitivities of things that I knew that she would not want to read about. I read a lot of things in high school and junior high for required reading that I hated and I wish I wouldn't have read. And I kind of want to avoid that with her. So I, I took into account her sensitivities, the things I know she's not going to want to read or read about. I took into account her, uh, her preferences of what she likes and what I thought she would enjoy more because we all know that you're going to get more out of a book if you enjoy reading it. And some books that would challenge her and some books that would be a little bit easier, but still give her an introduction to something. And I tried to have a really good variety of different kinds of literature so that she wouldn't get bored. So now I'm going to go into more detail of the different time periods. The first time period is the classical time period. This time period covered the Iliad and the Odyssey and the Epic of Gilgamesh and of course the Bible. Classical Greek like Aesop, Plato, Socrates, and, and Aristotle. Classical Roman like Caesar, Horace, and Virgil's Aeneid. And then August, Augustine of Hippo's Confessions, Marcus Aurelius's Meditations, early Christian writers, as well as ancient Japanese, Indian, and Chinese literature. So I didn't want her to have to read all of those. She, we've already read The Odyssey as a Family and The Epic of Gilgamesh as a Family. For this, she read an excerpt from The Epic of Gilgamesh to kind of remind her about it. She read some Japanese poetry, some Indian fables, some Chinese poetry, an excerpt from the Aeneid, an excerpt from Meditations, an excerpt from Confessions, and then read about Stoicism. There was no novel that she was required to read for this time period. Next, I had the medieval time period. In this, we have Old English Saxon, Beowulf, the seafarer poem, Viking epics, and Chaucer's Canterbury Tales, Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, The Pearl, Dante's Divine Comedy, and Scottish folk ballads. So what I had her read was the seafarer poem, Instead of having her read all of Canterbury Tales, I just had her read The Nun's Priest Tale. And then she read excerpts from Sir Gawain and the Green Knight and The Divine Comedy. Um, there was also no assigned novel for this era. The next time period was the Renaissance slash Reformation era. During this time, she read On Monsieur's Departure, The Doubt of Future Foes, uh, poems by Queen Elizabeth. She read Queen Elizabeth's speech to the troops at Tilbury, Sonnet 121 by William Shakespeare, excerpt from the essays of Sir Francis Bacon, quite a few poems and sonnets by John Donne, and some poetry by John Milton, as well as an excerpt from Paradise Lost. She again, she had no assigned novel. The next era was the Enlightenment Age or neoclassical. During this time, she read poetry by Robert Burns, and she did have one assigned novel for this time period, 
but it's just the classic starts. It's Robinson Crusoe. The reason I chose to have her do a classic start was because I had just read Robinson Crusoe and I knew that there were a lot of things in it she wouldn't like as much. And so I thought I could give her the story, the basic story in this, in this classic start version, and then she could choose whether she wanted to read the full one or not. Obviously, the writing isn't the same and all of that, but I just I think I think they do these pretty well. And I was right, she didn't she wasn't very interested in the story and it wasn't the writing that was a problem for her. It was uh there were other things that bothered her and I will go into those when I cover our books at the end of this term. But I feel like it was a good start for her and if she ever chooses to read the full one, she can. She also was told that she could read Gulliver's Travels or Pilgrim's Progress again for extra credit, but I don't think she's going to. I also threw in some American specific time periods in her book. And so the next one was American Colonial. She read an excerpt from the history of Plymouth Plantation by William Bradford and the poem Upon the Burning of Our House by Anne Bradstreet. There was no assigned novel for this era. The next era was the American Revolutionary Age. She read an excerpt from the autobiography of Benjamin Franklin and Poor Richard's Almanac, both by Benjamin Franklin. She read the Give, me, Give me Liberty or Give Me Death speech by Patrick Henry and a letter to her daughter from Abigail Adams. There was no assigned novel for this era as well. All right, the next era is Romanticism. So she was going to read poetry by William Blake, by William Wordsworth and Dorothy Wordsworth, Lord Byron, Percy Shelley, an excerpt from Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I knew she wouldn't want to read the book. I have a feeling she won't like it, but I am hoping that as she gets older, maybe she'll want to. A uh, Some poetry by John Keats, an excerpt from Faust by Goethe, and, and she was assigned Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. I don't have that book with me right now, so I'll put a picture up. That is where she is right now in the literature course. And she's already read Pride and Prejudice and Northanger Abbey. So this year it's Sense and Sensibility. The next era is the American Early National. She's going to read an excerpt from The Devil and Tom Walker, The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. And her assigned reading is The Legend of Sleepy Hollow by Washington Irving. The next era is the American Renaissance or American Romantic period. She'll be reading Paul Revere's Ride and A Psalm of Life by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. She'll be reading poetry by Emily Dickinson and Ralph Waldo Emerson. A couple of excerpts from Walden, poetry from Walt Whitman, and her assigned reading is Scarlet Letter, although I am having her read the manga classics version of that. I, I know that the subject is going to be sensitive to her, and while I, I, while I really enjoyed the book, I felt like it would be better in the manga form for her. So I bought it and I looked through it and I do think she'll really like it. She really likes appropriate manga. And I feel like the manga classics are really good adaptations, at least all of the ones I've read so far. So yeah, so I figured that that was the best way for her to really have an introduction to The Scarlet Letter and to Nathaniel Hawthorne. The next time period is the Victorian time period. She'll be reading poetry from Mary Elizabeth Coleridge, Alfred Lord Tennyson, Robert Browning, Elizabeth Barrett Browning. She'll be reading information on and poetry from all three of the Bronte sisters. And she actually has three assigned books for this time period. The first is the play, The Importance of Being Earnest by Oscar Wilde. He's one of my favorites and this is probably my favorite play ever written. I, I know the strong words, <laughs> but I think it is. Um, I really like some of his other ones and of course other plays, but I do believe it's my favorite. She'll be reading Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. I really loved this book and I think she'll really enjoy it. And then she will be reading The Count of Monte Cristo. This one I think will be a little bit more challenging because when I read this it with the manga, even with the pictures, I found that there's so many characters at the beginning that it was a little hard for me to remember who was who, but I think she'll do better at that since she reads more manga than I do. The next era is the American Realistic. We've already read a lot of Emily Dickinson, a lot of Louisa May Alcott, and she's already read Frederick Douglass. She's already read Booker T. Washington. So I was trying to think, okay, what can I have her read for this? She's already read a lot of Mark Twain. So I picked The Prince and the Pauper from Mark Twain, but again, one of these classic starts. And the reason I chose that is because my younger daughter had this last year and she loved it. So I felt like that Abby might really like getting this. And then if she re if she really likes the story as well, then she can go read hit the full version since she does like Mark Twain. The next era is the American naturalist period. 
in this we talk about we talked about Jack London and Edith Wharton but I didn't really have anything for her to read during this time so I had a couple of things that she could if she wanted to again I didn't want to overload her with so much this year I recommended White Fang or Call of the Wild but I that'll be up to her whether she reads those or not the next era was the American Lost Generation or American Modern so we talk about E.E. E. Cummings, Robert Frost, F. Scott Fitzgerald, John Steinbeck, Ayn Rand, William Faulkner, Shirley Jackson, Dorothy Sayer, Carolyn Keene, Lucy Ma Montgomery, and the novelists that are around that time period on both sides. This kind of covered the 1914 to 1939. So of course, some of those were a little bit before that, a little bit after that. And then she has two books for this time period. The first is the very first, Nancy Drew, The Secret of the Old Clock. And then The Blue Castle from Ellen Montgomery. This is my favorite Ellen Montgomery besides Anne of Green Gables and one of the only ones that she hasn't read yet. The obvious one that it seems like I should have her read during this time is The Great Gatsby, but that is one I had to read in high school and I did not like it. And I know that's a controversial opinion, but I didn't like it. And I know for a fact that she would hate it. And also Faulkner, I did not enjoy him as well. I, I kind of wanted to assign John Steinbeck because I really like him. But in high school, I was assigned of Mice and Men, and I didn't go back to him for a long time because I didn't like it. When I finally got back to him and started reading some of his other books, I really liked them, especially East of Eden. I loved East of Eden, but I know that that is too heavy for her at this point. So I don't want to introduce him too early. I want her to come to him when she's ready. The next era is modernism. She'll be reading poetry from Yeats, and, and her required reading is The Little White Horse from Elizabeth Googe. Elizabeth Googe is one of my favorite authors. I, I just love her books. My daughter hasn't read anything by her yet, and I think this is the perfect introduction for someone her age. The next era is the American Beat Generation. Of course, this would have Jack Kerouac and Catch-22 and Arthur Miller plays, but again, these are things that I don't fit, think will fit into the sensitivities of my daughter. So she has the option of reading them if she wants to, but none of that is assigned. All right, that brings us to the postmodern time period. There was a little bit of confusion about when this was exactly. Some said earlier, some said later. So I just put it at 1945 to around 1980. She'll be reading the essay, The Changed Life of T.S. Eliot, and then reading two poems, then reading two different works by T.S. Eliot, The Burial of the Dead and The Hippopotamus. Her assigned reading for this is The Man in the Brown Suit from Agatha Christie. I said in another video that this is my favorite Agatha Christie. I think it is the one she would like the most. I really thought about doing and then there were none. That was the first one I ever read and I was in eighth grade. I don't know if she's ready for that or not. While most of Agatha Christie's are not that violent in my opinion, I feel like something like this is going to work better and if she really likes it, she can read more. If not, then at least she's got the one I like the best. <laughs> and that brings us to the last era, which is contemporary. So I put that as 1980 to present. So this covers a lot of the books we already have on our bookshelves and that she's already read. So I tried to think of a book that's come out recently that I really love that I think she'll love but that she hasn't read yet. So this one I mentioned in my October video of books for October. It's The Clockwork Sparrow, the first book in the Sinclair Mysteries by Catherine Woodfine. I think she's going to absolutely love this book. It takes place in the Victorian era, a girl that goes to work at a department store and there's a mystery involved and she kind of gets this little, this crazy gang together, four people, four kids that really don't have anything in common and they all work together to figure out this mystery. And I think she's going to absolutely love it and then she can read the rest of the series if she wants to. So that's it. That's what she's doing for 12th grade literature. I know there's a lot of great books, a lot of great poetry, a lot of great things left out, like I said at the beginning, but I do think this is going to really give her a good overview and introduce her to authors and people that she hasn't read before. So hopefully she'll love it. I think she will. I think she'll really enjoy it. And I will update whenever I do our homeschool updates. I will let you guys know what she's thought of the books that she's read. I probably won't cover all of the poetry and all those things unless she says something stood out to her. But I will update with what she thinks of the books that she reads. In the next video, I'll share what my younger daughter is doing for her literature.